Hi. Now, before we tackle the last part of this question here, I'll just remind you of what we found out if you looked at the earlier video for parts A and B. Remember, we were given these two particles, A and B, of masses 2m and 3m, and they were connected by this light and extensible string passing over this smooth pulley. And we had to find the acceleration of B, which we found out to be 3 fifths G meters per second per second. And we also had to find the tension in the string, which was 6 mg over 5, or 6 fifths mg. Now, for part C, we're asked to now find the magnitude and direction of the force exerted on the pulley by the string for four marks. So, if you'd like to have a go at this, then I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. And when you come back, I'll give you the answer and then I'll take you through the work solution. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So the answer is 6 root 2 over 5 mg newtons. Or if you took g to be 9.8, it's 16.63 and so on times m. But if you round it to three signal figures, it'll be 16.6 m newtons then. So how did I get these answers? Well, what I'd want to do is to, first of all, mark the forces then acting on the pulley. And those forces would be one coming down here. It'll be equal and opposite to the tension that we've got here in the string. So that'd be T newtons. There'll also be a force pulling the pulley in this direction. It'll be equal and opposite to that tension there. So that'll be T newtons. And these two forces now want to pull the pulley in this direction. This direction being a bisector of this angle here of 90 degrees. So that makes these angles in here 45 degrees. So just mark those in there, 45 degrees there and 45 degrees there. And these two forces now pulling the pulley into the table in this direction. But we know it's in equilibrium, so there's got to be a force opposing that. So it acts in the opposite direction to the dotted line. And I'm just going to call that, say, P Newtons. But as for the resultant force acting on the pulley, it's going to be P newtons, but it's going to be acting along the dotted line. So we need to find that force. And to do that, what we need to do is consider resolving our forces in the direction of the dotted line. So let's just put on that resultant force then. Resultant force. So it's the resultant force then of those two tensions. And to do that, we split the tension here into two components, one perpendicular to the dotted line and one down the dotted line. The one down the dotted line would be T cos 45 degrees. So that would be T cos 45 degrees. And the one perpendicular, well, that has no effect. Now we could split this tension into two components, one perpendicular and one down the dotted line. Again, the one perpendicular has no effect, but the one down the dotted line, that would be T cos 45 degrees as well. So really, I've got two of these. And that is my resultant force then on the pulley. So it's just a question now of substituting our values in. And We've got then 2 times the tension. The tension we found out in part B was 6 mg over 5. And we now multiply it by the cosine of 45 degrees. And working in exact mode, cosine of 45 degrees is 1 over root 2. Now if we simplify this, root 2 goes into the 2 root 2 times. So you've got root 2 times 6 mg over 5. And that would look better as 6 root 2 mg over 5. And that would be measured in newtons.
Or if you take g to be 9.8 and work this out on your calculator, you'll find you get 16.63 and so on m. Or if you round this to three sigma figures, that's going to be equal to 16.6 m newtons, okay, to three sigma figures, 3sf then. So any of these answers, I'm sure, are acceptable. Now I'm also asked to give the direction. So uh, what would that direction be? Well, the direction is going to be along the dotted line. So direction is at 45 degrees. Let's say below the horizontal. OK, below horizontal. Should be clear anyway, I would have thought, from the diagram. So uh, there we go. I hope you can see that. All right.